Hey, what's up guys? I'm back today with another tutorial. This tutorial is going to cover what a lot of you have requested. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. Now the first thing I want to say is thanks for giving me to 40 likes on that video. So really appreciate that. And second of all, make sure you're using Cinema 4D R13 for this to work uh, the best. So with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at what we're going to be creating today. This tutorial is going to teach you how to shatter any object um, um, without using any plugin. Uh, whatsoever so just using the default tools we have available to us in Cinema 4D so we're going to play this um, it's playing back a little bit slow but that's what we're going to be creating today so with that said let's go ahead and let's go ahead and quit Cinema 4D and we'll start fresh from the very beginning so give this a minute to load up so the very first thing we're going to do here is go up to the floor icon add a floor object right click on the floor go to simulation tags and add a rigid body to the floor alright so now we're gonna go up to our primitive objects icon so the cube object icon drop in a sphere go to the Y position change that from 0 to 100 to align the sphere directly above the floor alright and next step to do is change the type um, of the geometry from standard to icosahedron and let's go to MoGraph fracture object drop the sphere into a fracture object and in the fracture settings and object tab change the mode from straight to explode segments All right and uh, so the very next step here now is to go to the bend object icon uh, so where you can see all our deformers and go to explosion effects and make the explosion effects a child of the sphere and you're immediately gonna see a weird little effect going on here that's fine in the explosion effects parameters, we're going to have to change a couple things. So go to the explosion tab, change the blast time to 0 .001. And we still kind of have a weird little effect going on here. So we need to go into the gravity and zero out the acceleration. Make that zero. And now you can see we have a rough um, sphere. The geometry is very rough. Um, but that's okay. We'll fix that in the end. So um, let's go to... Uh, let's go to cluster and let's change the thickness. This is going to be the thickness of your pieces when they shatter. I found that two centimeters looks pretty good. Uh, anyways, that's what I use for my video. So that's what I'm going to be using for this tutorial. You can make it as thick as you would like. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and change our frame range from four or from 90 to 400. Let's drag this over so we have some more frames to work with. And uh, let's go ahead and turn off our fracture object temporarily so we can modify um, what this explosion effects is going to affect. So. So let's um, let's just drag the explosion effects to right about right about here. We could drag it over a little bit farther, I guess. And uh, basically, what's inside this red radius here is what's going to be affected by the explosion effects. So if you only want part of your sphere to affected be affected, don't put the whole sphere inside this red, green, and blue circle you're going to want it to only be part of the circle or the sphere so uh, I'm going to do roughly about half half of the uh, sphere to be affected by the shatter so let's go back to sphere and let's change the segments from 24 to about 80 or so so now we have a lot more segments to work with and if we go to our back into our explosion effects we may have to fine tune exactly where we want the shatter to happen So. If we uh, zoom in, you can see the geometry being split up where it's perfect over here, and then over here you have all these little cuts, and it looks pre fractured basically. All right, and uh, let's go ahead. Let's go to. Uh, we're going to have to add one more thing. Go back up to the bend object icon, go to polygon reduction, and drag the polygon reduction and make that a child of the sphere. Go to the reduction strength and change that to about 15 percent or so and then press the go to start of animation button to refresh it let's turn on our object um, fracture object and refresh it now sometimes when you play this the sphere might disappear for you like when you press play it'll just go away uh, you may have to turn on and off your polygon reduction your explosion effects your fracture to try to get it to refresh it can be a little bit of a pain but it's worth it in the end and you should be able to get it to work eventually I did not encounter that problem this time. I have in the past, so just be aware that may happen to you. 
and you'll notice uh, what happens uh, if it does happen to you you're, when you press play your whole sphere will disappear and there won't be nothing so just um, like I said try to refresh some of these uh, objects and things in your hierarchy and you should eventually be able to get it to work anyways once we have that um, the next step here is to go ahead onto our fracture object and let's right click go to simulation tags let's add a rigid body tag to the fracture object let's, and we're gonna have to change a couple attributes around in the dynamic settings so in the dynamics tab make sure you change the trigger from immediately to on collision and then go to the collision tab and change the shape from automatic to moving mesh and then change the individual elements from off to all and um, we're basically set up here and ready to go so uh, if we go ahead and drop in another sphere we'll go ahead and increase the segments of the sphere to about 30 or so let's uh, scale it down somewhat and we'll just drag it over and we'll drag it up about right there up above our main sphere let's right click on the sphere we just dropped in go to simulation tags add a rigid body Let's go ahead and play this. And you can see there already is our animation that we're getting. So it uh, looks looks pretty nice. So uh, once again, we'll play that. And that's how you create a basic shatter without using any plugins. So I'll go ahead and take you through the process of texturizing this and setting up lighting and render settings while I'm at it and show you exactly how I made uh, the animation breakdown video that some of you may have seen already. So anyways, uh, once we have that, um, that was basically the whole animation right there. Um, so you can see that looks uh, looks pretty decent. So uh, let's go ahead and start setting up our lighting. And I'm using Grayscale Gorilla's lighting kit in Studios just because it's easier to use and they're really well done. If you don't have that, I'd recommend you go get it, download it or whatever. Uh, but if you don't want to or don't know how, uh, you can just use one of the default lights that Cinema 4D has. And just drop those into your scene like so doesn't really matter I however will be using grayscale gorillas um, light kit so let's go ahead and um, let's go to window content browser let's drop in the this studio right here let's drop that in and what we'll do is take this um, uh, let's change the shape of this um, dynamic tag to a static mesh and to copy this, we'll just hold control and then uh, click and drag this dynamic tab to the new, um, what will be our new floor basically. So we can get rid of this floor and all of our dynamic settings for this tag have been copied onto uh, this sweep. So basically this studio. So if we play this, um, this is still dynamic and um, interacts with the studio. So um, now you'll notice uh, if you have a lot of pieces, uh, the more more segments you split this into, the more pieces you are going to have in your animation. Uh, your program may uh, choke on it a little bit and may get a little bit sluggish, not play back as well. So first thing I'm going to do uh, real quick is go ahead and save my project. Uh, we'll name it whatever. Uh, save that to the desktop. Hit save, and then um, we we'll go to Edit Project Settings, and let's go to um, dynamics and we'll go to catch and we'll hit bake and what this will do this will go in this may take some time I'll come back when it's finished it'll go in through and bake the simulation so um, basically what that means is it'll store all the calculations uh, with inside the program itself so whenever you play this it knows exactly what it needs to simulate it won't have to think about what it needs to simulate in real time because that's what it tries to do and that's why you get sluggish playback um, so it tries to figure out all those calculations in real time and it can't necessarily do that so it plays back kind of slow so when you bake the animation it stores all the calculations and it knows exactly uh, what to do the second you press the play button so come back when this is finished apologize for me rambling on anyways yeah <laughs> yeah so I just got done baking it uh, it shouldn't take too long I wouldn't think but if we go and play this it should play back a little bit smoother as you can tell it's playing back a little bit better it's not quite as choppy as it was before so it may not be a hundred percent but it should definitely help your simulation play back a little bit smoother if it's kind of choking a little bit so anyways that is that so you can see our animation 
Now that's pretty much what it's going to look like at this point in time. So let's go back to the beginning and make sure bef after you bake it and before you make any changes, you hit clear the catch. Uh, you want to make sure you do that or else uh, you won't be able to see your changes. So clear the catch and you're good to go. All right, so what do we need to do now? Well, now we need to go ahead and add some lighting to this. So uh, we got our studio in there. Let's go back to the window content browser. Let's go to the Grayscale Gorilla HDR light kit. Let's drop in an overhead softbox and we'll also drop in a regular softbox. And with this parameter, let's go ahead and with the softbox look to go to the light color and let's change this to kind of a orangish kind of color. So we kind of have an orange glow more or less. And we'll do the same thing uh, to this, to the overhead softbox light color as well. Doesn't need to be exactly the same, but uh, get it about right there. That looks good. All right, so let's go ahead and create the, the texture, uh, the material for our sphere. So uh, we're going to be working on the fracture object sphere, so the one that's shattering. We're going to change the material. Let's go click on the color picker and go to black, and then let's go to reflection and add some reflection. Let's change the brightness to about 10% or so. Go to texture for now. Go to about 15% on the for now uh, settings, and then just uh, exit out of that. Drag the material onto the sphere itself. Okay, and now the next thing we're going to do is... Um, make a texture for this sphere. So double click down here, double click on the material, change the color to, um, let's go ahead, let's go ahead and add some reflection real quick and change the brightness to into about 15% and let's go to Fresnel and make that 15% as well. And we'll go ahead and make this, uh, actually we can make this white and let's go to color and let's go to texture and let's go to gradient and go click on this box right here and change the type from 2D U to 2D V and then this uh, little uh, box whatever you call it little key whatever uh, we're going to change this to black and then double click here in the middle and make whatever color streak you want to have so you could do like really like a red kinda or whatever you want really we'll just make that red as well and then drag these two in towards the middle to create a stripe more or less okay so that looks good and we can also go into luminance and um, let's make this red as well and let's go to texture and let's go to gradient 2dv and uh, let's try to match this up as best as we can so make these black again double click down here make this red make this red and then drag your sides in here like so okay that looks pretty good so there is our material for this sphere and actually what we oh, we'll leave it at black black's fine well, actually, I'm thinking maybe we should um, let's let's go ahead and change this to a white color. Actually, that looks kind of cool. Uh, I don't know. Hmm. Just trying to figure out what I want to do here. Alright, that's fine. It doesn't really matter. Anyways, you can do whatever you want there. And there is our animation. If we go ahead and give this a quick render, we can take a look at what this is going to look like. And we have actually haven't modified any render settings yet, and it already looks it looks decent uh, as it is right now, which is good. So that one frame, frame rendered out, and that's what it looks like right now uh, with that one frame. Um, I'm going to go ahead and save this real quick. Um, there are a few things, still a few more things we need to change here. Um, let's see, I'm trying to remember exactly what that is. Uh, I did All I did right here was zoom in a little bit 
And uh, what we could do on this material is go back to the luminance and let's up the brightness here to maybe like 200, 200%, I don't know. You just have to kind of play around with this. It may be a little bit too bright, who knows. Uh, you can change the the brightness of this. So if you go to multiply, this should be pretty bright. Let's go to our render settings and finally start changing some render settings. Let's go to the width and change that from 1280 or from 800 to 1280 by 720. If it is an HD, go to frame range, select all frames, go to save save this as a quick time movie uh, change the file and name it whatever you want so tutorial and save that to the desktop so that's where it's going to be saved when we render this out go to anti-aliasing go to best two by two you can leave the minimal at one by one go to effect and we can add in uh, global illumination is optional if you use it make sure you go to the radiance catch and change the stochastic samples to low and the record density to low uh, just to kind of speed up render times a little bit and you can even add in some ambient occlusion I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick uh, render preview and see what this looks like real fast see what we have and I'll decide if I want to add an ambient occlusion so I'll render this out real quick and I'll come back when it's finished one frame rendered out um, that took about 54 seconds to do that one frame and uh, that's what it looks like with just global illumination applied and that, uh, that looks pretty decent doesn't look too bad so that's that what that one frame would look like um, so yeah there you go that's that um, let's save this we'll go ahead and add an ambient occlusion and we'll see what what it looks like now after we add ambient occlusion so once again I will go ahead and render preview this one frame and we'll come back when it's finished again so that took a, a 1 minute 23 seconds so about 30 seconds longer to render one frame with ambient occlusion uh, I think we do get a little bit better shadowing and whatnot, so I kind of like it with ambient inclusion. It's a personal preference, and you don't have to do it. And always keep in mind, um, it will take longer to render. So I'm going to go ahead and save this real quick. All right, so that is it, guys. Uh, that's basically how it works. Um, that is your, your effect and your animation that you have. Um, and all I did after this was I went into the dynamic settings of the fracture object and added some friction. Um, added some to the studio, so the floor, I guess, a little bit, and I changed the bounce down to about 30, 20 or 30 percent. You kind of just have to play around with these values, whatever suits you the best, and uh, you get a different effect every time. So, as you can see there, so that is basically how I created the animation breakdown video that so many of you have requested a tutorial on so here it is um, and all I did after this was uh, rendered it out and then put it into After Effects added some magic bullet looks uh, flare and some real smart motion blur and that was the final render that uh, you guys saw so um, I always recommend after you get done with an animation, you go in and composite it in After Effects, add some color correction or something to it. Um, if you're wondering uh, how to uh, get rid of these, like you can already tell that it's pre-fractured um, before the sphere even collides with it. You can uh, go into your explosion effects, go to basic, and then check off enabled, and then go to the frame right before it hits, and then keyframe that. So that it comes on becomes enabled and then there you go that way you can start it from the beginning and it'll look like a regular sphere and then whenever it collides it'll break apart so uh, that is it guys um, hope this helped you out uh, hope you found it interesting hope you enjoyed this tutorial hope I didn't go too fast and uh, yeah I think that'll do it uh, Appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this, and I will see you guys later. Peace out.